All right, guys. It is a dark and stormy night there in the collapse of global industrial civilization, and I have uh, been uh, up to some various projects today. It is 8 o'clock at night, and I am just now getting around to bringing you my... Uh, Daily Chronicle of the Collapse, and kind of a real hodgepodge here on this gloomy now Monday night. That would be October 4th, 2021. Oh yeah, before I, before I uh, start today's roundup of Collapse, uh, I want to send out a big thank you to our newest, the newest member of my my small exclusive group known as my Patreon page. Uh, I want to thank uh, newest my newest patron, Paz. Is it Paz or Paz? P A S. Uh, for joining up, I, I'm a little confused, Paz. I I can't tell if you found collapse chronicles via airbnb or did you find airbnb via collapse chronicles but i must say uh, uh, i think pause is my first airbnb guest slash fellow collapsitarian and uh, <laughs> and i really do appreciate that and uh not to toot my own horn guys but i was named an airbnb super host i uh Yes, Sam Mitchell, the the old doomer himself. I am now officially an Airbnb super host, and we can thank uh, my doomer roommates. Uh, the three of us are, I guess, living our double lives here at uh, at Bugs in a Jar Farm. But anyway, with that pleasant task out of the way. Uh, you know, I'm trying to draw dots between all of these various stories about uh, f just figuring out all of these dots for myself between all of these supply chain crunches and energy crises and skyrocketing prices of commodities and <coughs> all of this stuff. I know this is kind of dry listening for a lot of doomers they they you know they they want the blood and guts of mad max but guys you know this is what it's going to look like i mean this well not what it's going to look like this is what it does look like uh i don't think who knows you know this is what i do here i chronicle all sorts of versions of collapse and and i honestly don't know how big of a snowball uh, this whole thing is uh, and, and where it's leading but it is certainly in snowball mode uh, I'm not quite ready to uh, launch in because I'm still trying to figure out myself pretty good story in the Telegraph out today from England China's power crunch puts global economy on red alert. I'm, I don't know. Or is, is the global economy being put on red alert because of, uh, of the energy crisis going on over there in, in China, which, you know, is really going to be affecting all of that planet-eating crap that they make in all of those Chinese factories. Uh, it's, just, it's just one of the many factors in the snowball. Uh, but you better believe it, it, it's a major and will become a more major ingredient in the supply chain crunch, starting with the supply. I mean, right now everything is just hung up in transit, but once they get that kink out of the system, then uh, what you're going to see is if, if these factories aren't pumping all of this crap out, uh, who knows? But we're gonna we're gonna put this whole thing uh, on the back burner, and here's just just a few of the ways that this is playing out. I just wanted to touch on this Christmas panic 
what is it? Is it Oct what is it? October fourth? Christmas panic begins as sales of frozen turkeys rise fourfold in September. It's uh, I, I had never even considered the concept of somebody shopping for a Christmas turkey in September. Never crossed my mind that anybody w w would be so clueless as to buy a, a frozen turkey in, in, in September. I mean, a turkey, that, that takes a big hunk out of your freezer. September, you buy a, you buy your Christmas turkey, what, let's say September 15th. I don't, that thing is going to sit in your freezer for over three months, and, uh, but people are already freaking out. Uh, that turkey, and they very well might be right, uh, that, that you're not going to be able to get a turkey by Christmas. Uh, and, and, and I'm sure there is panic buying of toys. You know, toys and, and all of that planet-eating crap are really, uh, you know, are really going to take a hit. You know, I was, uh, I heard elsewhere on the Doomosphere <clears throat> today talking about panic buying of disposable diapers. How uh, the, the latest, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, it's the closest cousin of toilet paper. Uh, you know, this is what it's, you know, as the normies begin to realize how screwed we are. Panic is, uh, that is going to be the reaction as more and more people, I mean, just the slightest little fractures in all of this, the slightest little hiccups, and uh, people run into the store uh, buying their damn turkey, frozen turkey three months in advance, uh, you know, st stuff in their garage full of diapers. Uh, you know, I mean, when the, when the real panic gets here, you know, I mean, th this is, th this is just a, uh, <laughs> this is a Sunday walk in the park, guys, and we don't even need to talk about that other panic, uh, right now, uh, but anyway, I want to tie it all in, and, and I admit, and I admit that I that I touched on quite a bit of this in my oilprice.com article from last week. But uh, I really want to. We're, we're going to touch on some various things, starting out with this story. I like this one. If coal, if coal is dead, then why are ships so full of it? Yes. I'm just going to read the opening to this article, then we'll jump into the main article I want to focus on. <clears throat> Amid all the talk about global warming, climate change-induced catastrophes, decarbonization, and green finance, the global trade in dirty coal is enjoying an iconic renaissance. Bulk ships are busy transporting coal to Asia and to eco-conscious Europe, boosting freight income from, um, you know, to the ship owners and the, and the prices of these, uh, that the ship owners are charging now, the cost of freight, good Lord, uh, like four times what it was a year ago. This is a quote from Ben Nolan, an analyst for whoever Stifel is, one of these energy analysts, Ben Nolan, quote, It turns out the news of the demise of coal has been greatly exaggerated. Despite an unseemly carbon footprint, coal demand is actually accelerating this year. Yes, it is. So, uh, and we're going to break down a uh, bunch of this uh, from this group called Benzinga. 
not sure what the uh, what Benzinga normally reports on, but uh, today they're bringing us this article. Despite exodus of empty containers, U.S. exports are hitting new new highs. So what you know what it was that that uh, reference to empty containers meaning you know up until now that uh, well and, and now uh, that the majority of all of these millions of containers uh, what did I read today I don't have it flagged I mean some astronomical number of these uh, containers uh, being shipped to the U.S. from China. Asked, I, 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 was it 20 million of these containers uh, being uh, heading to the U.S. from China uh, this year? Don't quote me on that. Uh, I wish I had it, but they're talking about how so many of them have to go back empty. Uh, but we're going to look not at the empty containers, but we're going to look at the big picture and find that U.S. exports are actually rising now and on track for a record year. It's just that more of our exports are being loaded aboard tankers and dry cargo vessels as opposed to container ships. Okay, the value of U.S. goods exports going to China and, and Asia and Europe and, you know, leaving here in the first seven months of this year topped those in any previous January to July period, uh, reaching $990 billion. So just shy of $1 trillion of stuff, uh, all of this planet eating stuff heading out of the U.S. and of course a lot of it going to China. Uh, I would show you this graph so it you know it shows the well obviously right after you know in the heart of the corona panic last year it dipping down and then it is shot back up like a boomerang. Uh, so they break this all down <clears throat> You'll be surprised. I, I don't know why I was surprised about this. Outbound cargoes of soybeans, corn, coal, which obviously we're going to talk about, liquefied natural gas and liquefied petroleum gas are all up, while sales of crude and refined products are healthy despite the corona panic. So they use this term agribulk, agribulk, uh, which is shipped in dry cargo bulk, dry cargo bulkers is what it's called, uh, where volumes have rebounded strongly. Agribulk export sales began to surge last October, fueled by purchasing in China. Uh, okay, all of this talk, you know, and, and this is why, you know, we, we still need to listen to Book Hermit. All of this talk about th this collapse of, uh, of grains and all that, uh, you, you hear all of this stuff down here in the Dumasphere. Uh, about uh, the upcoming food riots and food insecurity. Well, uh, exports in June and July, uh, including soybeans, corn, and wheat from the U.S., grown here in the United States, totaled 96 million metric tons, the highest total ever recorded, I'm sorry, that was January to July, 96 million metric tons of uh, soybeans, corn, and wheat uh, were shipped out of the U.S. That is the highest total ever recorded 
in the first seven months of a year. So this is, uh, you know, sending this stuff out of the U.S. So I don't know, I honestly don't know what our own domestic reserves did. Was this 96 million tons? Uh, have, have we filled our own domestic food banks? <coughs> you know, this is all just part of confuse us till we die. Uh, doesn't sound to me like... Uh, Now that was the food, you know, the stuff that was grown last year, mostly. Uh, D D. Uh, la, 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 la. So they're shipping strong global volumes of agribulk, as well as coal and other commodities have propelled shipping company rates higher than they have been in over a decade, now coming in at about $37,000 to ship one of these giant ships of corn or whatever. Okay, let's look at natural gas, which is all the <clears throat> buzz here. Natural gas is the biggest U.S. export success story of sheer volume growth. LNG export facilities uh, saw their volumes temporarily drop last June through August due to the corona panic, but that setback was short-lived. According to data from the Department of Energy, LNG exports totaled two trillion cubic feet, two trillion cubic feet were sent, uh, you know, mostly fracked here in the uh, U.S. were exported between January and July, uh, similar to Agribalk, this, th this two trillion cubic feet of, of uh, natural gas was the best first seven months of the year ever by far. Yep, 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 yep. Volumes uh, were up 54% from the same seven months last year and up 118% from uh, the same period in 2019 and they are appear to be remaining high in August and September. Uh, this could have something to do uh, with the fact that natural gas prices are now historically high in both Europe and Asia where there is a worsening power shortage and our dots going back to uh, to all of this, uh, so if you want to, all right, if you have twenty million dollars, uh, you can purchase a cargo ship full of uh, of of liquid natural gas for twenty million dollars. You float it over there to Europe, uh, and sell it uh, from one hundred or between one hundred twelve million and one hundred and twenty-eight million dollars. So imagine this conclusion: the prospects for for U.S. Uh, gas exports are now so strong that domestic natural gas consumers, such as myself, are worried. Uh, last week, the trade group Industrial Consumers of, of America urged the Department of Energy to intervene and reduce exports, quote, to prevent a supply crisis and 
price spikes for you know U.S. consumers this winter. We're sending so much. I, I, I mean, it, 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 if if I could turn a twenty dollar bill into a hundred and twenty dollars, and you know, in Europe, and and I don't know what you could turn that twenty dollar bill into here in the U.S. Why do you think we're shipping all of this stuff uh, to? Uh, to uh, Europe and China. But anyway, so what is the story with coal? So let's get some actual statistics. All right. As with natural gases, prices of thermal coal, which is the coal used for power generation, are at all time highs in Europe and Asia where prices now top two hundred dollars per per ton, uh, despite long-standing environmental concerns over burning coal for fuel, demand going into winter should drive more exports of U.S. coal, and so the U.S. Energy Information Agency currently predicts the United States will export 82.1 million metric tons of coal this year, which is up 30 percent uh, year on year uh, from last, up 30 percent uh, from last year and on par with pre-COVID levels in 2019. And uh, this year's gains are being largely driven by the thermal coal shipment. Right, so the thermal coal uh, portion of that is expected to rise 49%. The total coal is 30%, but thermal coal, which is going into coal-fired power plants in China. You know, China making this big splash last week, how they were saving the planet by no longer financing coal-fired power plants uh, outside of China. Meanwhile, in their own country, they are jacking up coal imports from the U.S. by 49 percent, while exports of metallurgical coal, which is the coal used to produce steel, are expected to rise 20 percent uh, this year. Uh, same thing with propane, which isn't quite, you know, pro actually I use propane here. I always get liquid natural gas and propane mixed up, but uh, whatever the difference is, uh, U.S. LPG exports are also on the rise. Uh, according to the EI, exports of propane and butane uh, averaged 2.1 million barrels per day in January to July, which is up 15 percent from the same period last year and up 32 percent from January to July of 2019 and showing continued strength through September. And, and of course, guys, when you're, when you're listening to all, all of this, is all of this fossil fuel stuff is under Joe Biden's watch. Joe Biden is moving a hell of a lot more fossil fuels than Donald Trump did. Do, do, do we understand this? That Joe Biden is, is, uh, is hawking more fossil fuels than Donald Trump ever did. Okay, we cannot forget good old crude oil now that we have uh, some statistics. Um, 
All right. Combined U.S. exports of crude and oil products, I wish they'd separated them, uh, in the first seven months of this year averaged 6.17 million barrels per day. According to EIA, that is the third best January to July period on record. Uh, there you go. Uh, and prices going up, uh, as we all know. Uh, anyway, guys, we could go on with this, but I think you get it. Anybody acting like fossil fuels are going anywhere particularly under the Joe Biden administration, uh, especially coal. This is the best year to be a coal investor uh, in years. This is by far the best year to be a natural gas investor. Uh, these fossil fuel investors are falling all over themselves. Uh, anyway, I could I, 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 I could explain some more of these dots, but I realize I'm talking to myself and I have to uh, crank up some propane to go cook me some uh, farmed tilapia, no doubt imported from China. I have to uh, go eat some Chinese tilapia and cook it over some propane before we send it all to China. Get out there and eat your Chinese tilapia while you still can. Bye, guys.